Well, I feel intensely sorry for him. I mean, he is a very decent man, hardworking. He was a wonderful father. Megan owes him such a lot, and she's treated him appallingly. Uh, she's treated him in a way which is just totally unwarranted. And there he is sitting in a rather shabby cabin in New Mexico, um, and it, he doesn't deserve what she's ladled out. When, when I met Tom, as I say, I kind of felt a little bit sorry for him. Um, it's his 80th birthday. Meghan's several hundred miles away. It would be quite an easy thing for her and Harry to either drive down or give him a call or send him a card. Do you think that could ever happen? No, I mean, Meghan is completely unforgiving and Harry has behaved appallingly towards his father-in-law. And unfortunately, I think it's not just the, what these phony photographs, but it's all to do with snobbery and everything else. You know, he is a retired man, he hasn't got much money, and Meghan is just famous for dumping people who don't suit her profile anymore. And I just feel as well that her mother poisoned the atmosphere, uh, most unfairly as well, because Thomas was very good to her. Uh, and in the end, he's a great man, a good man, who is going to spend the rest of his life wondering why he has been treated so badly. Well, you paint a picture of this in your book, Revenge, um, where you, you list many occasions where Meghan has, I think we call it ghosting someone, where Meghan, I think there was one incident you report in, in, in your wonderful book where when she was a child, she would give a silent treatment to one of her friends. She would almost turn her back on her until her friend decided that she would speak to her again. I mean, this is, this is her behaviour. This is what she does, but this is her father. It is her father, but she did the same to Harry and his family too. I mean, Meghan is an agent of poison. She actually is able to destroy relationships. And when she cultivates relationships, it's always for her own good, her own purpose. So she's not actually someone who's any generosity of spirit. And uh, it is really one of the great sadnesses of this whole saga that in the end, Meghan has destroyed the relationship between Harry and his family, just as she has destroyed the relationship with not only her father, but all her, also her half-sister. I think, I think with Meghan, I, you know, I've been devil's advocate, but I feel a little bit of... I can understand, possibly, that she feels a bit betrayed by what happened with Thomas when he was, um, you know, making those paparazzi pictures just before her wedding. There's obviously a lot of stress going on with Meghan. She's, she's spoken about, you know, the stress that she was going through before the wedding, and I don't think, you know, those photographs, really, the stage photographs, really helped. I mean, is Thomas maybe to blame for the fact that Megan doesn't talk to him. Does, does, he, does he hold a little bit of the blame, maybe? No, I don't think at all. I think what happened was in the run-up to the wedding, he was just abandoned, whereas Daria, her mother, got a lot of help from the palace of what to do, how to cope and everything. He was absolutely besieged by journalists once they found out where he was living, and no-one came to help him. And even when he had his heart attack and wasn't able to get to the wedding, no-one was there to help him. So I think that the palace behaved appallingly towards him, abandoned him, very much, I think, because Harry and Meghan themselves just weren't there to help him either. They just thought he was someone who could be ignored, and that was a great tragedy for him, and I think also for the royal family. You talk about be being ignored. I mean, Thomas, um, over the years, has spoken out, and I think that Meghan has, has kind of got frustrated at times. That, that, but that's all, he, that's all he has. You know, if his daughter's not talking to him, then that's all he has, is, is, to, is to speak to the media and give his side of the story and try to get a message towards Meghan. Well, yes, we've got to remember another thing about it. Meghan's mother deserted her when she was two years old. No one ever saw Meghan's mother at school in all her years, both at primary and at secondary school. So Thomas, working phenomenally hard as a lighting director, always made sure that he was at home then for Meghan, took her out at weekends, paid for her schooling, paid for all the things, including her union ticket, to become an actress. So suddenly, to be treated in that way, so ungratefully, so spitefully, just has completely shattered a man who, in the end, doted and worshipped his daughter. And he can't understand it. And he just thought that the letters and the things that Meghan publicised about what a terrible man he was was completely unwarranted. And, of course, that's the indication of Meghan. I mean, it's not just, obviously, her father. She did the same to the Queen. She did the same to Princess Kate and to William. She is a person who has absolutely remorseless in her hatred if she doesn't decide that someone should be uh, neutralised uh, and destroyed, and that is her strength and, of course, her weakness. You paint that quite quite well in, in Revenge about the, about the... 
the amount of effort that her father went, you know, as a, as a single parent, you know, the amount of money, you know, given a roof over her head, the support all the way through university. Um, I mean, Thomas maybe feels now that now's the time, now he's ill, and he is seriously ill. You know, we've both spoken to him, they've been out there and, and met the guy. He, he's not a very well man. Now is the time, at a, as 80 years old, that he, you know, a parent would expect their successful daughter, but not only the successful daughter, but also his son-in-law. I mean, does Harry need to maybe reach out to Tom at some stage? Because he's never met him. Never met him, but I think it's too late for all that. I mean, the, the Sussexes have moved on. They don't care to hoots whether he's frankly alive or dead anymore, and probably they prefer him to disappear. I mean, that's the problem with the Sussexes. They are only interested in themselves. All the talk about helping society and generosity towards the underdog is all just really puff for themselves. And you've got to judge the Sussexes by the way they've treated Thomas Markle, which is appallingly. Uh, they have no compassion for a man who deserves it. And unfortunately, it's going to get worse as he gets older and, and sicker. And even that was the most astonishing thing when he had his stroke. The one, uh, Megan left her home in Montecito, but didn't go down to Mexico to see her father, but went to the site of a school shooting instead. It was just all, of course, for the cameras. One thing that, that did jump out in, in, your, in, in the book, Revenge, and I think it was with an interview with, with Tom, and obviously Doria is a, you know, is a black woman, Tom is a, is, a, is a white man, and there was a discussion, is this right, when, before Megan was, was born, there was, Tom, Tom has said there was a discussion where people said, what colour would, would Megan be? And that jumped out because that's, a, that's you know, a phrase or a discussion that has really come to hit the royal family in later years, you know, because Megan mentioned it in an Oprah Winfrey interview. How damaging do you think that allegation is against the royal family of races? Oh, I think uh, Megan's uh, allegation of racism, because it was basically completely untrue, caused huge damage for Britain's reputation, the royal family's reputation across the world, incalculable. And it still is there. I think that the way in which the Caribbean islands, Commonwealth countries reacted, I think the way that uh, African Commonwealth countries reacted, was unbelievably negative. And of course, it was completely and utterly untrue what Megan said. There, and, and what was remarkable was that Harry contradicted her uh, in the Netflix interview and then afterwards denied it even said it. I mean, they literally forgot that it was recorded. They tried to pretend they hadn't accused the royal family of racism. It just shows how short sighted they are and uh, how limited they are. But no, I mean, the damage was huge, it was intended to be huge. I mean, she had rehearsed that line as she had rehearsed the whole of the uh, Oprah Winfrey interview. And unfortunately, it has done great damage and I don't think it can be really cured.